Welcome back, everyone. Well, I am in London right now, and I figure, why the hell not? Why not come out and see what the city, the beautiful city of London has to offer? I am here at KJ West One. Amazing, amazing gallery-like store, high and audio store, okay? Uh, and I'm here in front of Jason, who happens to be the manager of the store. Jason, thank you for having me. I appreciate, appreciate, appreciate you allowing me to film uh, this amazing store, uh, where, by the way, we get to see something that I'm familiar with, the Wilson Audio Chronosonic XADX. These are called what? Uh, this is the Summer um, Four Seasons color. Summer Four Seasons color, and perhaps the most beautiful color I've ever seen on a Wilson Audio Chronosonic. Uh, these are the Alex V's, the new model, and these, which I have only seen a handful of times, the Grand Utopia Eagles, correct? Uh, these are not Evos, these are original pair. The original pair. They look very similar. Very similar. So you happen to be in a very interesting spot, Jason, because in the United States, we don't do this. Like, we don't ever get to see the serious artillery, as I call it, that you have here. Because sure. these are serious pieces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and having, not only that, you have Wilson, and we have Magical, by the way, which you can see here, the Magical M3s. Okay, so he has Wilson and Magical in the same roof. I believe there's only one dealer in the United States that offers that. He's in Buffalo, New York, I want to say. So... They're in a great position to offer some of the two greatest American brands that we have in the country. Uh, but tell us a little bit about the store, how long you've been in business. Um, I'd like to know a little more about what you have going on here. Sure. So, yeah, I'm, I'm Jason. I'm the manager here at KJ West One. So uh, our store's been here in London since about 1965, um, in this particular building since 86. Um, we've always been a, a high-end uh, store. You know, we've, always, we've always been... Uh, uh, doing all the same sorts of brands that you see behind us. Um, our business over the past uh, 10 to 15 years, I would say, has moved a little bit more high-end. So we've got uh, more of the bigger items and less of the sort of more normal items here. Um, but uh, our, our business our business works well. You know, we, we cater to a lot of very interesting people. Um, and I guess from my point of view, I've been here 10 years now. You know, I do this purely because it's a passion, really. Um, I mean, the uh, I, I get to unleash my full inner <laughs> in vinyl geek here where I can uh, listen to all this crazy stuff and uh, bring my records, play things to people. And, um, yeah, I mean, basically offer the best service we can. So. And, by the way, speaking of vinyl, yeah, he was saying something very interesting to me, which I'll try when I get home. Let's, let's go ahead and so let's give you a chance. No, I, for me, as I say, with Hi-Fi Systems, ultimately, the equipment's lovely, it's great, and it's why we're all here, but, you know, it isn't the driving force for me doing this. I, I care about music, and the, the you know, a bit like a drug addict, I suppose. <laughs> it's like uh, the equipment is the enabler for me to continue having my fit. And, um, you know, whether it's digital or analog or anything in between, ultimately... Um, uh, doesn't matter to me as long as it sounds the best. Now, in my particular opinion, with my experience that I've had, I think analog usually gets you closer to the music than digital does. However, um, one thing that I do do at home, and I do it here most of the time, uh, and certainly it's an interesting party piece to show people, is if you have your turntable and you play records, whatever it happens to be, and then you turn all of the digital off that you have in your system, so DAX, streamers, anything like that, so there is no digital on on the system off at the wall, and then you play the same record again, usually the system relaxes, it's usually more natural, you usually hear more of the analog sound that you want to hear. And I can only put it down to the, the digital is, is putting noise into the mains around everything else, and you know you can hear it with the analog systems. That's an interesting. That's an interesting thought, and I I call it a thought because I haven't tested it, but I'm going to try it once I get home. Maybe you guys should give it a try. Those of you who are watching and have a digital system and analog connected in the same preamplifier in this case, so. Try to shut everything off at all your digital and just play your turntable by itself. Do a comparison. Send me a comment. Send me an email if you find any difference with what he's saying. I mean, he showed me some crazy record. Can you bring yeah. out a record? He's going to show us. Let's go into the room real quick. So he's going to show us, hopefully, the light. Yes, yeah. uh, I can come out of here. It's fine. Okay. So he's going to show us this. He's so passionate about vinyl records in general. He was showing me something that I have never heard of. Maybe some of you who are deep into the vinyl world would understand better than I am. So this doesn't look like it's very interesting. It's just a white, white box, white box set. But this is, um, so I collect a lot of interesting um, uh, records and have done over the past 10, 15 years. 
um, uh, a lot of test pressings, a lot of interesting audio file stuff. And again, it's down to because I want the best out of the system, not necessarily because I love just splashing money on records. But this in particular, so I saw this in the States, and um, this is a classic records box set from the mid-2000s, which was never released, and it's number 18 of 20. So this is the Who Quadrophenia split over seven discs, and they are single-sided 45 RPM. So uh, that in itself is, is interesting, uh, but there were standard classic records releases with that. So rather than it being you know two or three albums and you've got music each side, this is 45 RPM, and you've got the music one side, um, and then the other side you've got nothing. You've just got the classic records logo. Um, and in this particular case, because it was never released, it's a test pressing, so it sounds even better than the standard wow. version of something. So, yeah. Interesting uh, stuff. Let's go walk over into this room, which is their main listening room. Um, let's walk in here so that he can talk to us about what he's got going on with regards to the turntable um, and, all, of course, the moving pieces, everything that makes this system sound amazing, by the way. So, um, talk yeah. to us. Yeah, so, okay, so we've, in, in our system here, from the front end point of view, we have two turntables. So we have the uh, Dorman uh, Helix 2 with a Reed 5T laser arm. So I particularly like the arm, it looks very cool. Um, so it has a laser that points backwards into this sensor here, and uh, it's not on the moment, I can turn it on so you can see. Yeah. Um, and basically, wow, laser. basically, rather than um, uh, the arm being on a fixed pivot point like normal arms, or, at, or like a linear tracker where it goes across the record, this pulls the entire arm forward as it comes across. Um, so it keeps the you know front of the cartridge square. And um, uh, it, there's a mechanical version of this arm where there's linkage to achieve this. This particular one has got, as I say, the laser that reads where the arm is, and there's a motor that pulls the whole arm forward. So it's very clever. It's an interesting design. Um, we have the Vertair RG1 here as our alternative analog front end. Um, very nice, again, using their new uh, X-Trax cartridge. Um, then we move on to the um, RCM Big Phono. So this is a Polish brand um, that, that only makes three products, three phono stages. Very, very nice. Interesting sounding. I like how it sounds because it's a nice, dark sounding phono stage. It's not noisy. It's not not complicated, it just does what it needs to do. Um, then we move on to digital, and we're using um, DCS at the moment, so this is a Rossini Apex uh, player and a Vivaldi uh, clock. Um, and then on the rest of the system, we have got a uh, solution amplifier system, so a 725 preamplifier down here. Yeah. Yep. Um, and conditioning that entire system is the Shinyata Everest uh, conditioner with uh, an Ineos uh, on the floor next to it, which it shouldn't be, but it's the only place we have for it right now. Yeah, stick, man. Yeah, yeah, music server. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a cool product. I like that too. Um, okay. Now for the main pieces. Yeah. So um, we've got the new Wilson Audio Alex UV, um, which has been around for best part of the year now, but it's a fantastic speaker. We really like it here. So quite a few of them. Um, with a, a Wilson Loki sub to fill in a little bit of the bottom end for us. We have a bit of suck out in our room and it just sort of helps around 40 hertz. Yeah. Um, and moving into the middle, we've got uh, Solution 701 Monos um, and uh, uh, another Shinyata conditioner for these, a Typhon in this particular case. Um, and cabling also, we have, we have Shinyata power cables uh, and conditioning and we have transparent um, Opus in this case, uh, Spooky Cable and next. What else do you display Wilson Audio with? I know a solution today. Do you have any other amplification? Uh, usually, we sort of we have three, three or four big amplifier brands. It usually is this or Dartsil, D'Agostino. Uh, we do have Zandon as well. We have Macintosh. Um, I would say more common it's the, the first three. So Solution, Dartsil, or, or D'Agostino. I wanted to ask you with a little more about this digital. Uh, and analog. What do you sell more of here in the UK? Do you sell more digital or analog? I would say it depends on what level of system the guy has. So I would say digital goes in every system. Analog goes in 50% of systems. But it tends to be the higher end systems that have analog. So guys that have serial systems like this tend to have both. They tend to probably have analog as their master source and digital is there for when they can't play records perhaps or to, to listen to streaming or something like that. Um, 
for, but I do have a few customers that only have, have digital, so it's, it's not absolutely a hard and fast rule, but I would say more likely um, analog is, because ultimately, you know, the, 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 the um, uh, music industry has done a fantastic job of uh, uh, sort of uh, killing all of their revenue streams by streaming everything, so you can spend £20 dollars a month on Tidal or Spotify or whatever, and you can stream anything that you want. You know, analog by comparison is an expensive endeavor, so you've got to buy the records, the player, look after it, right. clean it, blah, blah, blah. And it's a lot more time consuming, a lot more expensive. So for the average guy that has a cheaper system, probably digital just makes sense. And it sounds pretty good. It does. But, it does. you know, at the higher end, when you when, when perhaps someone has got, got the, the money to spend and they want the absolute maximum, I think some of these records, like the ones that I showed, are giving you something that the digital equivalent doesn't. So, why analog for you instead of digital? Why do you prefer analog? Personal uh, opinion. I yeah, yeah, yeah. But my personal opinion ultimately is it, it, whichever sounds better for that particular piece of music. So I would say a lot of the music that I listen to, you know, Seattle, grunge, whatever, is mid-90s backwards. Most of it's going to be originally done on tape, uh, and therefore it's an analog recording and analog production, therefore the less you mess with it, usually the better it sounds, in my opinion. Um, and a lot of these guys do, do really good sounding analog records. Uh, more modern stuff with digital can sound very good. There's a lot of electronic dance music and other stuff like that that really, really sounds fantastic on, on digital. Really, really stunning. But, you know, most of the kind of other music that I listen to, for me, just sounds better on analog. So I tend to be an analog guy. And I would say, also, if we're looking at, like, natural instruments, they tend to be more real on analog to me. Yeah. than digital usually does. And I'm not saying digital can't do it, I'm sure it can, but you know, you have to look at the file or the recording that you're presented with. Right. And the reality is is that whoever's pressing the digital buttons in the studio or the analog buttons in the studio seems to be doing a better job with analog. <laughs> or maybe there's less they can do to it to make it bad, I don't yeah. know. But you know, that's that's the thing really. I would have to agree with everything. I echo all your feelings with regards to analog. I don't do enough analog of course because of everything that I have going on. I wish I had a little more time because you do have, you do have to have more time for analog. Um, the convenience factor of digital has always been one of its biggest strengths. So you can come home and just yeah. start playing a new playlist or a new album. You don't have to worry about ordering anything. Uh, but I can't deny it. I still believe my analog is better than my digital. Uh, we, I think analog has come a long way, though. I will say that from sure. where we are. It's yeah. definitely making the gap is, clo is closing, but I don't think we have matched it or let alone surpassed the analog experience. I don't think yeah. we're there. I don't know how long it'll be, or if we will ever get there. Sure. Because that's another thing. Um, I right now have, as I was talking to you earlier, the Lampasator Horizon, which I do like because it adds tubes in the mix, and that allows for some of that digital feeling to be uh, mitigated. Uh, you hear the natural glow of a tube. It's very engaging, beautiful harmonic. Yeah. Uh, so I definitely like that. But I can't say that it has topped my Chronos turntable. Um, and, and I will say it's sometimes for me very record dependent. Yeah, so absolutely. I, I have heard, for instance, the new Adele CD on digital and on vinyl, and it sounded nearly identical to me. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if it's because it's a copy of digital, this, this record. So this is the interesting thing for me. So a lot of stuff that's come out in the past 20 years where you have an analog version and you have a digital version, it's going to be an, it's going to be a digital master. It's going to be because it's going to be a digital file, whatever they use in the studio to to press the record ultimately. Yeah. And the only reason why I can come to where the record could be better, and I would say often it is, is because most likely they've got the original file, the master file, or tape, or whatever they're using, and then they cut the lacquer and press the records from that directly. And when they're using digital, they could give you the file, but of course they don't want to do that. So they dumb it down to the point where it's kind of acceptable to sell it to you. So I think with the record, you're getting probably closer to the original tape or the original file than the digital is after what they've done. You know, in, 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 in the perfect world, you have access to the master file. Um, but uh, and I have to say, having heard a lot of, you know, acetates or, or a few master files, if I'm lucky enough, the, 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 the beauty that you manage to achieve out of a system when you've got a source of that level is remarkable, and most people don't hear it. Um, and it, it, I think given it's 2023, and we can put men on the moon, and we can fly across the world in 10 hours, whatever, the fact that you can't get in any way really close to what the master file can do, unless you're very lucky, is quite a shame. And it sort of, you know, makes all of this stuff 
um, uh, more difficult to sell ultimately because you you're battling with an inferior source. But anyway, that being said, it, you know, if you get the right stuff, it still sounds pretty good. <laughs> I was asking him from a dealer's perspective earlier today when I was talking to him about what his beliefs are as a dealer. And one of the things he said was the fact that a lot of his customers trust him, trust him to guide them in the right direction so that they don't have to be tinkering. They don't have to be doing what I do 24-7, which is tinkering with the system. He's a believer in essentially taking customers to the promise, promised land and avoid, avoid all the bullshit in the middle, okay, which is... Something that I cannot say about a lot of dealers. Okay. Tell us a little more about your thoughts with regards to that. Yeah, I mean, I think I, I, I don't really like the term salesman. I'm not really a salesman, really. I, I'm here, and I kind of, I, as you said, I show people the way, and they either come with me or they don't. And I think, um, you know, it's my job as a dealer to listen to all of the equipment, have my opinions about what works and what doesn't, or what combinations uh, are great. And, you know, when you go to the customer, you can say, that's what you want to buy, or have a listen to these two because they're both fantastic, rather than having a list of 500 things and then going to five or ten different dealers and having five or ten different experiences. You know, the, the thing that you're adding value with, with, with the whole experience is you are the person to go to. You are the person that can make the right choice. And then when you've done that several times, there's obviously some trust gained. Um, and, uh, um, you know, ultimately that translates into into the guy buying from you without you having to do very much because you've proven your worth. Um, so, and, and, you know, I can only kind of say that from my point of view because I live it. You know, I have a big system at home, something broadly similar to what you're looking at here. Um, I collect a lot of crazy audio file records. I have music industry friends who give me test pressings and whatever, the sort of thing that you wouldn't usually just pick off the shelf. So, therefore, I've, I've, I've heard things that the average buyer wouldn't necessarily have bought, but it also gives me quite a reasonable opinion about which direction to push someone in. So hopefully I'm getting it right, and hence why people tend to... To come to you for more, uh, I wish a lot of dealers had that same idea, that same mentality of just recommending things based on their own experiences, not only at the store, but maybe at home. I know you have a similar system at home, so you have done a lot of extensive listening to come to your own conclusions. Granted, he is... Also given an opinion, this hobby is very subjective, so you could also be in a position in which uh, the dealer sells you a product or a combination of products, and maybe when you take them home, you don't really like what they have uh, uh, sold you because it comes from an opinion. But I will say this to you, that if they know and they listen, listen, first and foremost, listen to what you're looking for. What is it that your system, what kind, what do you dream of, right, when it comes to system? Yeah. You want a system with a lot of dynamics. Do you want a system with a lot of resolution? Do you do low-level listening? Do you do, you know, how is it that you sit down and listen to music every day? And dealer, the dealer taking notes to take you there. I think that's what makes a great dealer. Uh, but very few dealers, unfortunately, follow that path. And I wish more dealers heard the end user, which are all of you. Jason, it has been an amazing time here. Thank you for giving me the time of the day. No I appreciate the time uh, here. I'm having a ball here in London. Um, eating great food, seeing yes. a beautiful city. It's a nice first, place. Yeah. First time being here. Even the weather I like because, uh, I mean, I sweat too much in Florida. You know, that Florida is too hot. Uh, I live by the Everglades with some crocodiles in my pool area. But anyway, that's all I have for today. Visit this store, KJ West One in London. Highly recommended by me. Take care, and I'll talk to you soon. Peace.